subscribe my channel p sarala hit the bell icon so that you are notified every time i post a new lesson today we are going to learn about another important biochemical cycle regarding locomotion so this cycle is kori kori cycle kori and getty kori so these are the two scientists who discovered this cycle that's why the name kori kori cycle you may call it as a single kori cycle also so when muscles are under vigorous function if a person is doing uh, exercise or he is doing uh, heavy work then the muscles after some time becomes fatted so what is meant by fatting fatting means the muscle cannot further contract so it temporarily stop contracting so that is known as fatigue state so this occurs due to the low availability of oxygen in the muscle so why low availability of the oxygen because the muscle is working excessively but the supply of the oxygen is less than what it is needed so that's why the deficit of uh, oxygen leads to the concentration of a chemical which is known as lactic acid in the muscle cell this leads to the fatigue of the muscle so how this uh, lactic acid is removed from the muscle cell and it is again converted into glucose which is used for the muscle to generate atp or the energy so that is discovered by this these two scientists kori and kori that's why the cycle kori cycle so now let's see how the lactic acid which is formed due to, during the anaerobic respiration in the muscle anaerobic respiration means the respiration which uh, the breakdown of glucose which occurs in the absence of oxygen is known as anaerobic respiration respiration so this lactic acid uh, is, is formed from the glucose by anaerobic respiration so we learn how this lactic acid is again converted into glucose the formed lactic acid one fifth of the formed lactic acid is converted into carbon dioxide and water and remaining four fifth of the lactic acid is converted again into glucose which is useful to generate energy so next so how it occurs sir so let us see in the muscle if a person doing a exercise or the muscle is repeatedly activated so then the glucose is used to generate the atp that is the energy which is required for the contraction of the muscle so first the glucose is used and it is converted into pyruvic acid or pyruvate by a process which is known as glycolysis so it occurs if oxygen is present or oxygen is absent so glycolysis is a process in which oxygen is not needed this pyruvate so uh, the resultant product of glycolysis the pyruvic acid which is formed is goes into the mitochondria and uh, there it requires oxygen so uh, in mitochondria krebs cycle occurs and oxidative phosphorylation uh, cycles occurs so those cycles need oxygen so uh, during glycolysis only two atp are generated so only two atp molecules are generated if the pyruvic acid enters into mitochondria and if oxygen is available in mitochondria then it undergoes aerobic respiration and it forms uh, 30 approximately 38 to 36 to 38 atp are formed by krebs cycle 36 36 plus glycolysis to means 30 total 38 so if one glucose molecule is oxidized then Uh, by glycolysis and krebs cycle so uh, combination generates 38 atp molecules only glycolysis generates 2 atp molecules glycolysis doesn't need any oxygen okay so you have to remember that uh, the process glycolysis uh, doesn't need any oxygen but it liberates only 
2 ATP. If the pyruvate uh, enters the mitochondria and their oxidation occurs in mitochondria, Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation cycles together form approximately 36 ATP molecules. So, ATP molecule, more ATP molecules are generated in the presence of oxygen. So, 36 where the number 36 where the number 2. So, that is why muscles prefer Krebs cycle that is going, uh, going to uh, into the mitochondria and continuing the Krebs cycle or TCA cycle. But if the muscle is excessively contracted or it is excessively used, so then oxygen is exhausted. So availability of oxygen to the muscle becomes less. So then what it has to do, it has to stop, but the muscle has not stopped because it has to work though that is why it undergoes uh, uh, anaerobic respiration. So, it undergoes anaerobic respiration that is uh, glucose is converted into pyruvic acid. This pyruvic acid is converted into two lactic acid molecules or lactate. So, two pyruvate molecules are converted into two lactate molecules by with the help of an enzyme which is known as LDH. LDH means lactate dehydrogenase enzyme. So, this enzyme is helpful to convert pyruvate into two lactate molecules. So, so this lactic acid which is accumulated in the muscle, muscle cell causes the muscle to undergo fatigue. So, the muscle uh, further does not contract temporarily. So, so the lactic acid which is uh, which is toxic to the muscle cell so it has to be removed so it has to be removed from the muscle and it goes to the liver through blood so lactic acid enters into the blood stream so blood enters into the liver so this is the liver so in the liver these lactic acid molecules are again reconverted into two pyruvate molecules and these pyruvate molecules are converted into glucose molecules by a process which is known as gluconeogenesis. Neo means new. So, we know that carbohydrates form glucose. So, other than carbohydrates, if glucose is formed from other than carbohydrate molecules, then the process is known as gluconeogenesis. Neo means new. So, pyruvic acid is a new molecule that is an organic acid. So, here genesis means synthesis. So, from pyruvic acid glucose is generated. That is why the process is known as gluconeogenesis. This process requires 6 ATP molecules to, so to convert one molecule of pyruvate to 3 ATP are required to convert two pyruvate molecules. 6 ATP molecules are required. So, here if we uh, view the uh, Cori cycle, uh, so the gluconeogenesis cycle, so it is a, it is not an energy efficient process because here 2 ATP uh, during glycolysis only 2 ATP molecules are produced to form the 2 lactate molecules. To convert the two lactate molecules into glucose, we have to put 6 ATP molecules, we have to spend 6 ATP molecules. So, this is not an energy efficient cycle, but it is important to convert because the, there is no other chance to convert the lactic acid into glucose. That is why though it is a, it is not energy efficient, uh, it occurs in the body. So, the glucose which is formed in the liver either uh, goes into the blood. If the blood contains less amount of glucose, then it uh, goes into the glucose or it uh, converted into glycogen in the liver and it is stored. So, conversion of glucose into glycogen is known as glycogenesis and it is temporarily stored in the liver. Whenever need occurs, then glycogen is converted into glucose and enters into the bloodstream. So, here the glucose goes into the bloodstream. So, and this blood is supplied to the muscle. So, if the muscle stopped contracting by the time the blood reaches the muscle with glucose, glucose, then 
the excess glucose is converted into uh, into glycogen in the muscle also so in the liver also it occurs and in the in muscle also it occurs the excess glucose is converted into glycogen by a process is known as a glycogenesis glycogenesis genesis means you have to remember always synthesis so formation so from glucose what is formed glycogen is formed that's why the name glycogenesis so if the muscle requires glucose then the stored glycogen which is stored in the muscle is again converted back into glucose by a process known as glycogenolysis lysis means always lysis means breakdown okay so glycogen is broken down into glucose that's why this conversion is known as glycogenolysis so again the process continues uh, in the uh, glucose is converted into pyruvic acid if oxygen is available then this pyruvic acid uh, undergoes krebs cycle and uh, forms more number of atp if oxygen is deficient it is converted into lactic acid by the presence of an enzyme which is known as lactic dehydrogenase enzyme and the cycle repeats that's why the cycle name cori cycle hope you understand